Corey on the screen, and, and as I said, have Tim and Devon and the other team uh, guide me biblically. Yes, biblically. Well, that, that brings up another point then, because um, uh, did you bring in, I mean, when, when I was a dreamer, sort of working on Prince of Egypt, and there were rabbis coming in, and priests, and and pastors and mullahs and everybody coming in with an opinion. Did you did you go through any of that? Actually, not really. And um, what you know, at Burn Films, at Sony is the group that like you know sort of Devon's shepherding that. Yeah, Devon worked with them, and then. Uh, but I mean, the thing is, on this movie, we had it a little bit different than Prince of Egypt because we aren't telling a biblical story exactly. We're kind of telling a story that happens between the lines of the Bible story, and so you know there was that's why Carlos can kind of make up something new because the, the Bible story is really more of the background for this and this is a, an original story on the sidelines of that. I think between um, his background and then Devon, it was the first film we had Rich Blisco and Tom Adams who were incredible support and they really wanted to make sure we were telling an entertaining story and they kept, they kept keeping an eye on it. They were the additional eyes on this to say, yes, you guys are heading in the right direction or this could call some issues. But we really didn't have to course correct us on that. I mean, the thing that I like to talk about most is the, how classy and entertaining we kept this movie. It's the topic we wanted, and Carlos and Tim set up an incredible story with a lot of heart, and that was the most important part, but we were also telling a story about the first Christmas, that was the start of Christmas, and it was, it was an easy story because that backbone is there, and so you just had to stay respectful of it. And that was easy we knew how the movie was going to end. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and the animals gave us a lot of freedom to really add to the color of the story and really immerse people within that world. Well, that kind of goes to the next question I had. Now, how did the movie come together? Did, did Devon find you? Did you find him? Did, did how did, how did that happen? It, it, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing because this script, the very first draft of it was written in the late 90s. Uh, this mm -hmm. idea is almost 20 years old, it kind of right in the wake of Babe. You remember the movie Babe? Mm -hmm. The Henson Company developed this movie to be done in live action, kind of like Babe uh, would have been, you know, it would have been like that. But it took 20 years for it to actually be ready to get made, at which point we were doing it for animation. So uh, a lot of Carlos's job was to reread like the 10 different drafts that had been done over 20 years and figure out what to use and what to throw out. Yeah, I mean, the team was formed, actually, we were looking at a different story, and it was more allegorical. And so the team was formed, on, and Tim were working as partners on it. I know Jenny Martek, um, who was a creative exec at Sony, saw it head over heels, was a huge fan of Tim's and wanted to make a studio and knew that he was right for directing, and it was a natural part to work on that previous version. Then the studio came back and said, no, we don't want to just lightly tell a story at Christmas time. We want to, we want to go for it. And so that's where this was born, because Stephen Nelson and Devon had actually worked before at Henson Films and with Lisa Henson and knew about this script. And so they went back and found the script and said, yeah, this is, this is the direction we want to go. It was, like Tim said, live action. It was a little more dark than we would have taken it. So then the task of these guys were to take the essence and the inspiration of that story and really turn it into the story that you talked today. It, actually, something funny happened to me, if you don't mind. I, I had my car in the shop, so I took the lift to work, and uh, the lift driver was asking me, okay, what do you do? I work in animation. Oh, where do you work? Sony Animation. What are you doing? Directing. What's the movie about? Oh, it's the nativity from the point of view of the animals. And he was like, was that ever at the Henson Curse? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, I was a creative executive on that in the late 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. But it's hiring. I, well, you remember Christine. I said hi to Christine. Oh, okay. yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Did the heads have anything to say during this part? Did they, did yeah, Lisa in particular was uh, one of our executives at every meeting we did um, with the executives. Yeah. She was a great partner. She has amazing, she, I mean, she just has such an amazing back and, and background, and her notes are really incredible. She'd come in, she's, she's a very quiet lady, and she doesn't come in all full force, and just when she spoke, it was like, Oh wow, that makes sense what you're saying. She was a really good supporter of this. She has really direct notes. Yeah. <laughs> These are Thesaurus words. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know it. Thesaurus words? She, she suspected. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say at this point, I was a uh, point of interest also that when I first started on this project, you mentioned a little bit, it was a totally different movie. And we actually worked really hard on that completely different movie. Yeah, we actually had a full outline for a completely other movie. Well, they did 20 years of that movie. Exactly. Maybe not 20. It's still 
I made it. Know, the movie, it was nothing wrong with the movie. Mm -hmm. It's just they really wanted to go this direction. But that movie was actually a whole lot of really like it. So I hope yeah, that made I recommend it. I made it to page 48. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a call from the studio and said, we're not. Okay, hey, but that was only. Well, unlike most animated, um, most animated projects, I think everybody who's worked on one knows that the first script you write is never the story you're going to tell. So the fact that we only turned over to the script like months into it was that's a miracle in itself. You usually you spend like three years and then you throw it out and then you start again. We call that the crash and burn hard cycle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and the movie was done both here and, and also in Canada? Yeah, we did production, animation production up in Canada at a place called Cinecite in Montreal. Cinecite used to be a Kodak company years ago. Okay. Yeah, Cinecite is, um, they, have been, they were building their feature animation division in Montreal, so they were fairly new to it. They've done a couple of projects in the past, but this was their first movie at this budget and at this level that they had taken on. But they had some amazing people, I mean, Amy Butler is their chief creative officer, and he and I used to work at Disney together. So he's been mostly based in London, and they were really trying to step up and hit this. So this was a really big win for them to both get this and then accomplish it and make it something beautiful. They built the studio. They have an incredible pool of talent up there. So that was their goal, was to try and get that. So now they're, they're moving forward with their feature animation division up there. So we're going to start for questions. If anybody has a question, we have one right here. Talk loud. So, um, you did a great job of telling the story, and it's a great element with the soundtrack. So how did that come about? Did you go in saying we're going to do this high variety of types of music, or did it come after and to you that way? Uh, it was always a big push for the studio. You know, the studio has so many music groups, so they thought this was a really cool opportunity to do a Christmas album along with the movie. And the challenge for us was to find ways to make sure the music didn't just feel kind of slapped on top, so we tried to pick the right songs that it would help us tell the story. So like I, I really am happy with how the What Child Is This song is implemented because it's kind of, it's exactly what Joseph is thinking, what child is this, you know, what, what am I, and so we look for ways to kind of integrate the, the songs in that way with the storytelling. I think the other challenge that you, once you start getting into it, you don't realize until you're there, is everybody wanted to make a beautiful Christmas, Christmas album out to put out for them. The challenge is we didn't want Christmas songs. We didn't want to talk about presents and shopping and what we know as modern day Christmas. We wanted to go back to traditional carols, but then we wanted to find a way to make them fresh and be respectful to them. So huge, huge challenge for Spring and Ron Fair, our producer, and they you know, they, they know everybody in the music industry. And so people really were excited. We got such amazing talent and across different genres of music because everybody would love the idea of making a Christmas song that can be traditional and can last and it's not just um, so contemporary that it outdates itself. Those can last forever because they're around for forever. No Christmas, Christmas time is here with the chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> Another question? Another question? Way in the back. Stand up so we can hear you better. How long did it take to make the movie? Well, it feels like 20,000 years. <laughs> but it was actually, this This schedule was a remarkably short schedule. I have been, um, I think that's the new game in animation. I was at Disney for 20 years and every movie I worked on, and we said, oh, this is the fastest we ever made it. And Pirate Fairy did, we were just shocked. And this just beat it because we started this. You know, like we said, we picked up the new script in about January of 2015. 2016. 2016. What year? Oh, yeah, 2016. So, so less than two years ago, we picked up the old Hanson draft. Uh, but then it had to be rewritten, so we didn't have it. You know, Carlos had to, we had to give him more than five minutes to write a script, so we gave him, I think, over until March. <laughs> not ten minutes. To knock it, to knock that out, and and we did our first screening. I believe it was June of. 2016, and then we went into production, and we um, started working and engaging with Cinecite in the late fall. So we really production produced this from about January and delivered by October. So anybody who runs a production schedule can understand why we look so tired at the end of this. <laughs> Part of the production model, except for the big, big, big studios, is to is the, is the pair down there. Well, we had we had a really really good group of people and people who knew what they were doing. So a lot of it was talking about making those early choices up front that you could really establish. I mean, we brought in a great previous John Bermuda came on, and we really wanted to give Tim the full vision of being automatic in the previous early on when we were still dealing with some story issues. But if we could nail that and get the camera language down and start talking about 
lens choices and all that information mm -hmm. that can really set you up to fly through the back end. And being really smart, we have Sean Eccles as our art director and Craig Elliott as our production designer. Both have been around in the industry for forever. So we were making mm -hmm. as best of choices as we could so that we weren't figuring out visuals at the end. We were just really nailing the story we wanted to tell. Another question. Right up there. It was a comment. Go ahead. Yeah. It's, you know, like Jenny said, it's been a short schedule, but it has been very intense. So to be at the end of this now uh, is kind of amazing to, like, not have to go into work for 10 hours a day. You know, like, it's really weird. And, and uh, it, you know, our, our editor, Pam uh, Ziegenhagen, would say that telling, uh, making an animated film is like telling a joke and waiting two years to see if anyone laughs. Uh, <laughs> So it's been very nice, even just in the last few days, to see uh, the reception that we've been getting. And a friend of mine went out to go see the movie last night, but he said uh, the theater was sold out, so they had to go to a different theater. That was great to hear. So, yeah. We're going to go uh, I, mean, I think about just being up from like 10 p.m. to 3 in the morning for several weeks working on it. That's what I think about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> got a question up front? Given the short production schedule, what was the budget? Short production schedule and what was the budget? Um, the, the budget that's in the papers is around the $20 million mark, but really? yeah, we were, like I said, we were really efficient in part with where we're spent was and where we really wanted to focus on creative. We left very little. I mean, I think the least on the cutting room floor in this movie than I've ever seen. We, so that, that alone was how we could control budget and how we could actually finish, because if we knew the story, we, from day one we always told the same story, where we really iterated and flourished was making sure our character development was right. And our cast was great, so mm -hmm. they brought so much to the table that we can inspire the animators on. It's amazing for that budget. Um, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go up there. We'll come down to you in a minute. Uh, right there. Uh, hi. For the visual development of the film, did you? This obviously took place in the Middle East. Did you? What sort of sources did you look at for that? Did you go there? Ah, I wish. <laughs> Not on twenty million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we did a lot of research, though. And I mean, the thing is, I don't know if a trip would have been all that useful anyway, because we would have really needed a time machine to, you know. So it's like we really did more kind of research uh, into the archaeology. And Craig Elliott, our production designer, um, he and his friend uh, James Gurney, the guy who did Dinotopia, I was a huge fan and really nerded out when, it, when I found out they were talking to each other. They were they worked on a thing for National Geographic, uh, researching like. Jerusalem in the time of Jesus, and uh, found some interesting things. For instance, the climate has dried up in the last two millennia, so it actually was, you know, greener, like what you see in this movie, than how we're used to seeing uh, the Middle East. Um, things like that, you know. It, but I think the big thing was we wanted to avoid making it look dusty and old because 2,000 years ago it wasn't 2,000 years old; it was fresh. You know, everything had a fresh coat of paint. Craig was really good about building the world. Craig also does a lot of um, woodwork and art at home, and so he actually researched how things would go together. So if you look at, if you really want to nerd out, you can go look at the tables in there. They're exactly how they would construct the table at that time. And a lot of it is going back and you had physical drawings, not pictures, obviously, at that time. So it was, it was in extracting that information and applying it to where it was and making sure the colors were colors that you could get from nature because that's all they had to dye. So it was a lot of great research Craig did to pull this together. I mean, he put together pages and pages of information for us to design from. Yeah. 